Insurance Bureau of Canada selected AIR to conduct the most comprehensive study of Canada's seismic risk ever undertaken. Using AIR's Canada earthquake model, AIR analyzed two scenarios for the most at risk regions, the Vancouver metropolitan area and Quebec province. AIR's senior vice president of research, Jay Gwynn, talks about what AIR set out to achieve with the study. This is the most comprehensive study done for earthquake risk in Canada. It took us a team of 20 scientists, engineers, and other catastrophe risk professionals to develop a model based on which we have developed these two scenarios and a report. Our study showed that the two provinces of British Columbia and Quebec have substantial earthquake risk. In particular, the lower mainland of British Columbia, which includes the cities of Vancouver and Victoria, are, and the Shalova region in Quebec province, and which of course includes Quebec City, are particularly at very high risk. However, you have to recognize that catastrophe models are not designed to predict earthquakes. These scenarios are scientifically very credible scenarios that could occur. It is not a matter of if, but when. The Western scenario considers the Cascadia subduction zone. According to the Geological Survey of Canada, there is at least a 30% chance that a strong and damaging earthquake will strike southwestern British Columbia in the next 50 years. The western scenario entails a very large magnitude 9.0 earthquake occurring on what we call the Cascadia subduction zone. This is offshore from Vancouver. This is an area where two large tectonic plates are colliding with each other, the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. This is an earthquake very similar to what happened in 2011 in the Japan Tohoku earthquake and in 2010 the Maui earthquake in Chile. This earthquake would generate a very large rupture and therefore it would generate seismic waves that would impact a very large area of British Columbia. Along the coastal areas there is going to be tsunami damage. Within the city of Vancouver there is Richmond City which is built upon a river delta of the Fraser River and that is an area that is prone to liquefaction, which describes a phenomena where loose, compact, uncompacted sandy soils, when saturated with water and shaken, behave like a very large ball of jelly or think of quicksand. And any building that's built on that unstable soil is going to have a lot of damage. And that is what we saw in Christchurch, New Zealand very recently. Although large earthquakes are more frequent in British Columbia than in Quebec, it is another high-risk area in which there is a 5 to 15 percent chance that a strong and damaging earthquake will strike in the next 50 years. Our eastern scenario is a magnitude 7.1 earthquake occur occurring on the St. Lawrence River Valley. It's close to the Quebec City region. It is going to cause widespread damage to Quebec City for sure. However, this is also an earthquake that has a different characteristic. The eastern part of Canada is geologically very old and therefore the underlying rocks are very solid. This kind of environment tends to propagate the seismic waves to very far extents. Therefore this earthquake is going to be felt all the way from Toronto to Boston, although most of the damage will be in and around Quebec City. Quebec City also turns out to be one of the older cities of Canada, and therefore there is a lot of old building stock, masonry buildings in particular, that we expect there to be widespread damage to such structures and older structures and the infrastructure in general. First thing to take away from this study is Canada has real earthquake risk. Not only is there risk in British Columbia, but the eastern part of Canada, all along the St. Lawrence River Valley, as well as the Ottawa River Valley, are prone to earthquakes. These occur, earthquakes do not occur frequently, and therefore it is very easy to ignore that risk. However, events with very large consequences are possible, and the government of Canada, as well as the citizens and the consumers, need to be aware of it and take mitigative measures.